Hi, I'm John Lasseter, director of Toy Story and Toy Story 2. Look around me. These are Andy's toys. I am so excited. Um, the toys from Toy Story have always been very, very important to me. I personally have a huge collection of, in my office. But more importantly that, what these toys mean to the audience out there, to all of you. One of my fondest memories was right after Toy Story came out. Really only about five days. I had traveled down to Disney World with my family because the Disney Hollywood Studios was having a Toy Story parade at the time, and I couldn't wait to see my characters in a real Disney parade. On our way back, we were changing planes in the Dallas-Fort Worth airport, and there we got off the airplane, and my sons, you know, tugged my, my, my sleeve and said, Daddy, 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 look over there. And I looked over, and there was a little boy with his mom waiting for his dad to get off the airplane. He was holding a Woody the Cowboy doll five days after the movie came out. The look on his face was something I'll never forget. At that moment, I realized that Woody, Buzz Lightyear, all the Toy Story characters, they didn't belong to us at Pixar anymore. They belonged to him. And that toy meant everything to him. And honestly, I think of that little boy nearly every day that I work at, at Pixar in creating these films. And, and, and as we started approaching Toy Story 3, I kept thinking of him and thinking about the Toy Story toys that are out there and said, we can do better. Our, the idea that we had was we need to make the exact authentic toys that Andy always played with. We have never done that before until now. And so in front of me here is the, is the exact toys, and they're beautifully made. Thinkway Toys has done an incredible job. And what's really cool is the packaging. Now, you're going to have to do what I do, not by one, but by two. One to keep in the package and one to open up and play with. But anyway, if you look at all the packaging, it's exactly like how Andy would have bought it at the store. It is just fantastic. But the other cool thing about these toys is that they have kind of two modes. The, there's the toy mode, and then the toys come alive. And when the toys come alive, it is something to see. They really feel like that they have a life of their own. And so I think you have to get the whole collection. That's, my, that's what I would do. That's what I'm going to do. And uh, they're pretty great. So anyway, I, I hope you enjoy these toys, because I know I will. Well, oh my friend! Woody the Cowboy. Woody is Andy's favorite toy. You know, we always thought that Woody was kind of a hand-me-down from Andy's father. And we envisioned that he was merchandising from a 50s TV show. And, of course, in Toy Story 2, you find out that it was the famous Woody's Roundup that he was the star of. And so the new Woody doll is fantastic. It's all new. The stitching is fantastic. The fabric, everything is exactly the way we figure that the real Woody doll looks like. He is just amazing. Uh, he's got a pull string. He talks. Uh, in, in the face, we modeled on the computers at Pixar Animation Studio and the exact data. All the parts of him, the, the hat, his face, his boots, his holster, everything came from the original digital data. Um, you also get, this is what we always thought, that the, the packaging from Woody's Roundup, how Woody actually came, you know, if, if Andy's father were to buy him, this is what it would look like in the 50s. And of course, the best feature of all is when you leave the room, he comes alive. Woody the Cowboy from Toy Story. You know when we were thinking about what kind of toys Andy would have in his room in Toy Story? Of course, he had to have a dinosaur. Had to have a dinosaur. So he started thinking about dinosaurs, and of course, the most he had to have the coolest, most fearsome creature ever to walk the earth, Tyrannosaurus Rex. And we started getting a lot of um, dinosaur toys. And we started laughing, thinking about, this is supposed to be the most fearsome creature ever to walk the earth. And his arms are so pathetically small, he can't even pick his own nose. 
we thought, you know, and also most of the toys were kind of badly made. And so we thought, this guy, if he was alive, he would have a tremendous inferiority complex. And so that became the personality of Rex, who is the most insecure toy in the room. And, and so we've never, ever been able to make the exact Rex toy that Andy has in his room until now. And he, he is so cute, and he moves. Hi there. I'm a predator. No, really. I am. He, he's, he is so appealing. He has the voice in, in the movie, and he comes. And this is the box. We've never seen this in the movie, but we thought it would be kind of like a, a crate that he's being shipped in with, of course, a volcano in the background. You know, and uh, it is, is really a great a great box. But Rex is so cute, and he's exactly the same toy that Andy plays with, but he comes alive, of course, when you're not around. And he's got the voice and personality of Rex in the movie. So Rex from Toy Story. <laughs> This is R.C. from Toy Story. Now, we've never had a great R.C. car exactly the way Andy plays with him in Toy Story. So, but we got him now with his remote control exactly the way it is in the movie. What's really cool is he can go forward, he can go backwards, and best of all, he can talk. Watch this. Hi! How are you? Don't go off the table. There you go, buddy. So RC is great. And it comes, this is the packaging, the exact packaging that Andy got RC in. It's exactly the way we envisioned he would be packaged. And so it's really fun. This is two scale compared to Buzz and Woody and everybody. And he looks fantastic. And he totally is alive when you're not around. Remember in Toy Story, when Buzz and Woody follow Andy into Pizza Planet? Well, there is a crane game. It's the shape of a spaceship. And inside, what does Buzz Lightyear find? A sea of little three-eyed green aliens. Well, finally, you can have exactly the aliens that Andy has in his room. And you get, it, you get them in a three-pack. You don't have to win them in a crane game. You get them in a three-pack, and these little guys are exactly on model. So this is the first time ever you can get the true aliens from Toy Story. Buzz Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear was created because in Toy Story, uh, Andy's favorite toy was Woody, of course, and at his birthday party, he had to get the coolest toy made, right? So we started thinking about what would be the coolest toy. Now, I grew up with G.I. Joe's, and, and so Buzz Lightyear, I, need, I knew I wanted to have a toy that was uh, about uh, 12 inches high. And I just also watched my own sons. I have five sons and watched them play, and they're really into action figures. And also then, you know, thinking back, I grew up in the 1960s when all of the amazing NASA space missions were going on, the Gemini astronauts and especially the Apollo astronauts. And I used to get up early in the morning and watch them come out with their cool white suits on and the clear helmets and with their little suitcases walking to the elevator that would take them up to the capsule. And I thought they were the coolest guys in the world. And so we thought, why don't we do a space action figure about the size of a G.I. Joe, 12 inches high? That would be pretty cool. I would love that if, if I was Andy and got that. So that's where it all started. And the name Buzz Lightyear comes from Buzz Aldrin, which I think is an awesome name, the second man to walk on the moon, right? And then we started talking about space terminology. And, of course, the word light year is the amount of distance that a, a beam of light travels in one year, so light year. And so we thought Buzz Lightyear, that would be an awesome name. So that's how Buzz Lightyear got the name. And, and so if you notice that, that the design of him is such to where he's, um, he almost has that clear helmet, a white suit. It looks a lot like those, those early um, Apollo astronauts. Now, but we wanted to add some color to him. And so this is a little bit of trivia not many people know. 
Um, you know why Buzz Lightyear is purple and lime green? No, I, of course you don't, because I'm going to tell you. Because um, lime green is my favorite color, and purple is my wife Nancy's favorite color. There's a little bit of trivia for you. Um, so, so, it, but we also thought it's the same way Nancy and I go well together. I think lime green and purple goes really well together. So Buzz Lightyear. Now, the Buzz Lightyear toy, this is the best Buzz Lightyear ever made. You know, his, he is awesome. First of all, I've got to open up his wings for you. Watch this. They open up, look at, and his head moves, his head moves. And the lights flash, the lights flash, the first time. These are the, the way that Buzz Lightyear's wings actually open up in the movie. And he's got the red and the green lights that flash. Of course, his laser works really well. And look at his head moves when you fire his laser. And this is really cool, movable fingers, because Buzz, of course, moves his fingers and picks stuff up in your room when you're not around. So you've got to have movable fingers on Buzz Lightyear. He talks, he, he moves, there's great sounds, and he is rugged. And we have all new faces on, on Buzz Lightyear. This is a great expression. We actually went into the computer at Pixar Animation Studios, created the facial expression that we thought would be perfect for him, and the digital output from our computers was exactly what was used. So he is exactly on model. And of course, Buzz Lightyear comes in the exact packaging that you saw from the movie. You know, and when you turn around, see, remember in Toy Story, Woody reads the back of the package, it's right there, exactly from the movie. So finally, Buzz Lightyear is exactly the way Andy played with him.